Good morning. Firstly, I would like to thank the Management Committee of the Buddhist Gem Fellowship, BGF, for inviting me to facilitate this one-day workshop on Applying the Buddha's Teachings on Harmony into Our Daily Lives. Secondly, I would like to introduce myself. I am Canadian. I was born and grew up in Toronto. I have lived in Malaysia for more than 25 years. Malaysia is now my home. I worked as an engineer, so I have a practical, scientific perspective on things. I retired a couple of years ago to focus on my spiritual development. I now spend a lot of my time on meditation retreats. I have been teaching Abhidhamma for more than 15 years. Though I have a passion for Abhidhamma, I will not be referencing the Abhidhamma during this workshop. I will, however, be quoting a lot of suttas, more than 50 suttas, because this workshop focuses on the Buddhist teachings on harmony. Today's workshop is largely based on materials from this book. This book contains a series of short essays by Bhikkhu Bodhi on each of the topics that we will cover today. There are many sutta extracts supporting each topic. The suttas were selected by Bhikkhu Bodhi. In Buddhist circles, Bhikkhu Bodhi is well known for his excellent translations of the suttas. Studies have shown that we are now living in the most peaceful time in history. Experts have suggested that this is due to an increase in the general level of education and a global shift towards democracy. Though the percentage of deaths due to murder, genocide, and wars has reduced, there are still concerns regarding conflict within a family, conflict within an organization, and conflict within a society or community. The Buddhist teachings on harmony are relevant today. All conflict, from conflict within a family to wars between countries, have the same roots. Let's now look at the agenda for today's workshop. This is the agenda for the morning. There may seem to be a lot of items, but there's actually two groups of activities during the morning. The first group of activities will happen before the break. I will present two short talks. One talk on right understanding and one talk on personal training. After each talk, I will answer any questions related to the talk. That will take us to about 10.15. There are eight tables, and working with the others at your table, you will have about 15 minutes to come up with a list of things that you would like to do differently based on what was presented. I suggest that you start by creating a master list by going around the table and allowing each person to contribute one idea until everyone has run out of ideas. Once you have the master list, reduce the number of items until you have three. Finally, determine which item the group feels least strongly about and make that the third item. So after the small group discussion, each table will have two non-negotiable items and a third item that they feel can be replaced if a better idea is suggested. I will pick a random group calling out the number on your table. This group will present their three ideas regarding right understanding to the entire audience. The group will then take input from the audience to see if there are any ideas from the audience which may be a better idea than the group's third idea. The group that is presenting can then decide if they want to change their third idea based on audience input. I will then pick another group to present their three ideas regarding personal training. Again, we will get audience input to see if this group wants to change the third item on their list. After the break, we will repeat the same process with the topics of dealing with anger and proper speech. We will have lunch around 12.30. Lunch will be from 12.30 until 1.30. After lunch, we will repeat the same process with the topics of good friendship and one's own good and the good of others. That will take us to our afternoon break at about 3 o'clock. After the break, we will repeat the same process with the topics of community and settling disputes. I will give a short conclusion. We will organize a group photo, and then everyone will be given a combined list of 24 do difference, three items for each of the eight topics discussed during the day. Okay, we've covered the agenda let me now set some expectations for today. At the core of each of my eight presentations will be short extracts from the suttas. These suttas contain the message of the Buddha. You have not come here to listen to my ideas. What is important is the teachings of the Buddha. The Buddha is our teacher. I am merely repackaging and facilitating the teachings of the Buddha. I will present short extracts from the suttas. Bhikkhu Bodhi's book contains longer extracts from the same suttas. If you're interested in reading the complete suttas, they're available online and the slides will give the Nikaya and Sutta number to help you find it. Though Bhikkhu Bodhi and I are of the Theravada school, these suttas, these teachings of the Buddha, are common to all schools of Buddhism. Though different schools may have different practices, 
They all share the same core set of suttas from the Buddha. It is important to understand the context of a sutta. Some suttas were delivered to monks. These suttas focus on things connected to the holy life and things leading to Nibbana. Let me share with you a sutta delivered to a monk in which the Buddha defined the purpose of the teachings. The monk had approached the Buddha with a list of philosophical questions such as, is the universe eternal or not eternal? And is the universe finite or infinite? Here is the Buddha's response to these philosophical questions. It's just as if a man were wounded with an arrow smeared with poison. His friends provide him with a surgeon, and the man says, I won't have this arrow removed until I know the man who wounded me was a normal warrior, a Brahmin, a merchant, or a worker. His given name and clan name, his home village, town, or city, if the bow was a long bow or a crossbow, if the bowstring was fiber, bamboo threads, or sinew, if the arrow shaft was wild or cultivated, if the shaft feathers were those of a vulture, a stork, a hawk, or another bird. The man would die, and those things would still remain unknown to him. In other words, the Buddha was saying to this monk, don't waste your time on topics that are not important. There are extremely urgent things that require your immediate attention. Don't get distracted. Malunkya, you should remember what is undeclared by me as undeclared, and what is declared by me as declared. And what is undeclared by me? These philosophical questions are undeclared by me. And why are they undeclared by me? Because they are not connected with the goal, not fundamental to the holy life. They do not lead to disenchantment, dispassion, cessation, calming, direct knowledge, self-awakening, unbinding. That's why they are undeclared by me. In other words, the Buddha was saying to this monk, the urgent things that you should focus on are those things connected with the holy life and things leading to Nibbana. Now, this sutta was delivered to a monk, and the Buddha was saying that monks should focus on things connected to the holy life and things leading to Nibbana. I am not a monk, and I'm not yet ready to limit my focus to things connected to the holy life and things leading to Nibbana. Fortunately for us, the Buddha also delivered suttas to lay people. Suttas delivered to lay people focus on happiness visible in this present life and the way to a fortunate rebirth. Most of the suttas that will be presented in this workshop were delivered to lay people. Although some of the suttas presented in this workshop may have originally been delivered to monks, the messages from these suttas are also relevant to lay people such as ourselves. Before concluding, I would like to mention one more book by Bhikkhu Bodhi. This book, In the Buddha's Words, is an excellent introduction to Buddhism. This book contains a series of short essays by Bhikkhu Bodhi on a set of topics that introduce the Buddha's teachings. There are many sutta extracts supporting each topic. The suttas were selected by Bhikkhu Bodhi. This book is described as a landmark collection, the definitive introduction to the Buddha's teachings in his own words. I highly recommend this book. I have given it as a gift to both of my sons. Now, on to the conclusion. At the end of the workshop, you will take away a list of 24 do difference developed by the workshop participants based on the Buddha's suttas. How many workshops have you attended that ended up having zero impact on your life? Well, I hope that this workshop will be different. Nothing will change unless you change. This is a very important point. Too often, people think things will be better when somebody else changes or when the situation changes. People make up the world. If we change ourselves, we change the world. To make a change, you need to focus on your circle of influence. Now, let me explain this term, circle of influence, which I learned from Stephen Covey's book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. You can place things into one of three categories. Stuff that you don't care about, your circle of concern, and a subset of your circle of concern, which is your circle of influence. Stuff that is inside your circle of concern but outside of your circle of influence is stuff that we cannot do anything about. Reactive people put their focus here. For example, most of the attitudes and behaviors of your friends, family, and politicians may be in your circle of concern, but they are usually outside of your circle of influence. When you put your focus in your circle of concern that is outside of your circle of influence, you use up your mental energy and there are no results. Putting your focus here actually makes your circle of influence smaller because you waste your mental energy. Our circle of influence is stuff that we can do something about. Proactive people put their focus here. For example, your own attitudes and behavior are always within your circle of influence. When you shift your focus into your circle of influence, your mental energy can create results. Putting your focus here actually makes your circle of influence larger because you leverage your mental energy. You have probably heard the message, 
I need serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Again, nothing will change unless you change. Much of our attitudes and behavior springs from our habits. Changing habits is not easy. It takes commitment, mindfulness, and energy. I hope that the list of do difference that you collect at the end of today can motivate you and remind you of the changes that you want to make. Now is the time for questions and answers. 